We've talked a lot about self-hosting on this YouTube channel, but today we are going to put our money where our mouth is, and I'm going to show you guys how to install Git EA. Git EA is this thing that I've got pulled up right here. It's essentially your own personal GitHub clone that you can self-host on a home server, a VPS, your laptop, whatever you want. It's fantastic. As you can see, it's pretty much just a GitHub clone. Like, you know, you've got your repository list you've got your contributions that you can see you've got profiles like this is me over here you can go to any of these repositories and it'll show you you know all the files you can have a look at your commits you can go into your commits and you can see all the diffs it's really really great and i have absolutely no idea how i ever lived without this it's fantastic i've been using it for about a year now and i'm going to show you guys how to install it the first thing that we're going to want to do is log into our server. Now we're going to be installing this with Docker in this video just for pure universal compatibility. There is this great documentation over here on the Git EA website that goes over installing alternative methods. Like if you don't want to do it with Docker in a container, you can install it directly using these instructions over here. It's actually not too bad if you know your way around the Linux shell. You've got to create a user, you've got to create some base directories, make them owned by that user, you've got to, you know, run GitEA, make a systemd service. So it's a bit more involved, but it's a lot more customizable if you're not interested in using Docker. Uh, for me, my actual host that it's running on is using FreeBSD, so I can fortunately just package install GitEA, but it is not actually available in any official capacity for Debian, Ubuntu, and Arch, so Docker is going to be the way to go for this video. If you're not familiar with Docker or need help installing it, I covered it in my how to set up a Linux server video. That should install Docker, Docker Compose, which is what we're going to be messing with today, and it should show you how to start and stop and the very basics of it if you're not familiar with that. But today we're just going to boot it up with Docker. So this right over here is a Docker Compose file, so we're just going to go ahead and copy that and go ahead and log into your server of choice. So I'm going to be using a server I have called Crystal for this video. Uh, this is nothing special. This is just a Debian. It's a virtual machine actually running on my FreeBSD host, but we're just going to be using a Debian environment. As I mentioned, it's Docker, so you can run this on anything which has Docker. The OS does not really matter for this video. I'm just being transparent about what I'm running this on. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make a project directory. So I'm going to call this one cup OT because I think that's pretty funny. And we're going to go ahead and go to cup of tea and we're going to make our compose.yaml file. So if you remember the thing we copied just before, this is what's actually going to tell Docker, hey, this is how I want you to set this up. And there's documentation on Docker's website going over all of this stuff in detail if you're wanting to customize this a bit further. I'll just go over what's necessary to customize this the way that you might want to in this particular video. So right here, what we've got is uh, a couple of things. Now, the services part is where it's most interesting to us. So the image is Git EA, Git EA, blah, blah, blah. That's just the official Git EA Docker image that it's going to pull from the remote server, and then it's going to configure it like this. So the container name, Git EA, you could change that if you want, if you've already got a naming scheme for your uh, you know, containers and things like that. You could change the user ID and the user group ID. It's pretty arbitrary. You can change it if you like. Uh, networks, Git EA, that just uses this network defined up here. Volumes is where this gets a bit interesting, right? So the three volumes that it's mounting. So if you remember from my how to set up a Linux server video, when we went over Docker, I noted that everything in the container is not necessarily persistent. If you delete the image uh, or you try and, you know, start it back up again, it's actually going to erase all of the, you know, customizability that you've added. You can kind of think of it almost like a RAM disk, but not really. It's still on your hard drive, but it, it's, it acts kind of like a RAM disk. So when you boot it back up, all of the data in that container is going to be gone. So to avoid wiping out all of your useful information when the container starts, stops, or you update it, it mounts this external volume here for the data. So this dot slash git ea is going to be local to our project folder so that's you know cup of tea so cup of tea slash git ea is going to be mounted on our target as slash data you can change this if you want and you can make whatever folder you like just to demonstrate that i'll just rename it to t and we'll go ahead and write that file and i'll make the t directory here you could do the exact same thing just keep it as git git -y or git ea i like to say git ea and just make that folder called Git EA instead. 
Now, of course, it needs to get your time zone information, so it's going to load your time zones as well. Now, this stuff down here is where it gets a bit more interesting. So these are the ports that the container is going to have exposed. Now, you might be wondering, Hoff, why are there two ports? Well, I'll tell you why there's two ports. So the first port right over here is for the web interface that we went through earlier. So that's this one over here, this beautiful, lovely web interface that you're going to spend a lot of time looking at. Now, the second port is for SSH key authentication, because if you remember, Git can actually use SSH keys to avoid having to enter a password every time you want to push, pull, create, or private repositories and things like that. So this second port down here is to bind to the system's SSHD. Now, this first port here is arbitrary. You can change it to be whatever you want, and that'll be what you connect to the web interface on. This second port, so this first one here is the host port that it maps to. The second one here is the thing in the container that it maps to. You're probably going to want to keep this as 22, although you can change this to be whatever your host's uh, SSH port is. So if you had a custom SSH port, I really hope you're not running it on the default port. If you have a custom port set here, you can configure that right here and it'll pass that through to the container. So the next section in the documentation is about databases. Now, if you weren't aware, GitEA is going to need a database to store all of the information about users, passwords, SSH keys, essentially all of that good stuff like that for profiles. Even though Git kind of takes care of repository and log information on its own, GitEA, of course, is a full web interface with a lot of additional features that it's going to need a database for. So the default one you can have right here where you don't have to do any configuration at all is SQLite. Now, SQLite is actually a really great database solution for very small operations. So you won't really need, like if you're just using this for your personal use, you don't really need a MySQL database. It's a bit overkill. It's also got support for Postgre. If you're more of a Postgre fan, I have to say I'm a MySQL guy. Well, MariaDB, I guess, because I'm using the open source version. But either way, like if you don't want to, you can just leave this as default where it'll use SQLite, which is perfectly fine. Otherwise, if you already have, and I won't go over setting this up in this video because it's a bit out of scope. I might do a separate video on this actually. But if you already have an existing MySQL database set up that you want to use, you can just tell it to use that with these parameters here. So, you know, you've got your database type, set it to MySQL. You've got the port that it's running on, which of course you probably want to change. Uh, you've got the username and the password and all of that good stuff. And then down here, you set up the database uh, config separately in the Docker Compose file. A similar thing with Postgre, like it's essentially the same sort of vibe, except of course your type is going to be Postgre and you're going to have maybe a different mount point down here but that's pretty much it like if you want to set up this database it's very trivial to set it up or like set it up for gidea to use if it's already existing but setting it up from scratch might be where you run into issues quick side note actually make sure that your docker daemon is running before you try and run docker combos up because i just did that and it threw a big whole error about not being able to connect to the docker socket and that's because I hadn't actually started the service. So make sure that you've got the service started. Just check it with sudo systemctl status docker. If you don't have it enabled to run at startup, like I apparently wasn't on crystal, you can just do sudo systemctl enable docker. And it'll do it just like that. Just be careful because this is the only thing where distributions might change on Debian. It's just as simple as this, but it, on your distribution, it might be called a different service name or something like that. But now that we're done with that, we can literally just run Docker Compose up and we should be good. So it'll start pulling our image that we specified in the Compose file, blah, 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 blah. This might take a bit, so I'll just cut to when it's done. <laughs> So this is all done. Side note, I had to change the port because I forgot I was already using the port that I tried to run SSHD on in the thing, but I changed that and now we're up and running. So to actually access this, you can see here that it's generated some keys for us. It's listening the, so the SSH is listening on port 22, but that's on the container side. If you remember, we passed it through to the host, which I passed it through to the port 2321. So actually, if I want to SSH into this machine from Crystal, because Crystal's the host, I'll have to access Crystal on port 2321. But we'll get into that in just a minute. At the moment, you can see I'm running the web server on port 3000, as per usual. So if I just go ahead and get my web browser up, 
and I go to Crystal 3000, obviously you want to replace Crystal with whatever your host name is if you've got it defined in Etsy hosts or your IP address of your server on the local network. Now, here is where we're going to set up the initial config for Git EA. As you can see, the database type is SQLite 3 because we didn't change that. If you did change that and it hasn't automatically updated here, you'll probably want to change this to whatever you decided to use. So MySQL, my actual deployed version is using MySQL because I already had one set up. But uh, yeah, you can, you can change this to whatever you're using. The SQLite 3 is the default. The data path, I personally wouldn't change this. If you remember, this was just mounted on our you know local project file as slash data so it'll just make its own file and make its own database you can change that if you really want to so the site title you can change this to be i don't know offs great uh, github clone something like that you can change it to that again with these data pods you don't have to change this if you don't want to but the option is there if you want run as username git i would personally keep this um you can change that if you like, so git EA, the instance will run as the git user, which is what you're actually going to have to configure your keys as if you wanna be able to log in with SSH. So it'll create this git user for you. And essentially, if you guys remember like SSH copy ID, where you put your SSH keys onto the server, you're gonna be doing that, except instead of your usual local username, so instead of me logging in as MD Hoff, I'm gonna be logging in as the git user and copying my ID to that instead, but we'll go over that. So again, SSH server port 22, you can leave this there. This Remember, this is the container port. So we didn't change this from 22. If you did, maybe do that. Again, HTTP listen port, change that if you did. Blah, 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 the log path. So yeah, there's some other optional settings that we can have a look at. If you've got an email, you know, an email server that you want to dispatch emails to, probably about issues and things like that. I didn't bother setting that up on mine you can do all of these server uh, like third-party settings. So Gravatar is basically just a thing that will, you know, generate a random avatar for you. Personally, I never really dig that. So I disabled that. Uh, and there's some other things here that you can change if you want. I personally didn't bother. And then obviously you can do site admin, but I'm not gonna bother. You could if you want to though. Then you can just hit install Git EA and it'll go ahead and set it up based on your parameters. That step will take a little bit of time. And as you can see, all this crazy stuff started happening over on the command line shell. So as you can see here, we've got, you know, init db engine, do all this stuff, do all that stuff. And down here, we are presented with a sign in page. Now this is where we're gonna create our user account that we're actually gonna log into the web interface with. And from there, we can configure stuff like our SSH keys, our repositories and things like that. So you register an account, and of course, the connection is not secure. It could be compromised, of course. Uh, this is a problem if you are going to try and access this remotely. Now, there are solutions in place to stop this, but if it's just on your local network and it's just trusted computers running on the local network, this is okay. It's only a problem if you're going to be accessing this remotely. You want to set up a proper proxy server with like Nginx and a SSL certificate, something similar like that. I'll show you what I'm using at the end. It's a bit different, but it's still like, you know, secure. But yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and say Hoff. Uh, what else have we got here? Email address, bozo at bozo.org and a password. I'll just use the default Firefox one for now. So we'll go ahead and register and I will do this like right here. And as you can see, we are here. We are at my account page and I will disable this so that you can see the proper colors. Now from here, we can have a look at our profile and this is our profile beautiful profile we can make a new repository you know we can give it a name we can give it a license that stuff is pretty simple you guys all know that from github we probably don't have to go over it what we do want to go over is setting up an ssh key so over here if you go to the your profile oh you can't see that because of my beautiful face but if you go over here you've got a little icon and you go to the settings page so on the settings page, you'll see in the sidebar over here, we've got SSH and GPG keys. So it's very, very simple guys. You can just go ahead and add a key right here. And I'm gonna call this Hoff's grand master key because the master key opens all the locks. And I'm gonna go ahead and generate a new key for us. So I'll go SSH key gen in my console. 
and I'm going to say uh, home and the hoth dot ssh slash brand key. And I'm just going to leave the pass phase blank. And over here, we can go ahead and by the way, guys, like I am not going to be using this key for anything else. It's going to get removed exactly after. But uh, yeah, so you can go ahead and cat out the public key, which is this right here. And you're going to want to copy this right here. And you just go ahead and select add key. So now I can git pull and push using this key. But how do we actually use this key with git? The magic source comes with SSH configs. I'm not sure if you guys have touched SSH configs before, but essentially an SSH config is a file where you can tell SSH, when I use this shorthand, I want you to connect with these parameters. So for example, you can set the port, you can set the host name, you can set the identity file to use. You can change all that stuff and SSH will do it all for you automatically. This is what we've got at the end of the day. So the host is crystal. That's the shorthand Git is going to be looking for. The host name is crystal because that's the machine I'm going on. You could also substitute this with the IP address of the machine if you haven't set up Etsy hosts. The user is going to be Git or whatever you selected in the setup menu. The port I've chosen is 2321. Now this is the host, the host port for SSH that you set up in your compose file. It could be whatever you want. And in my case, I chose this. And of course, the identity file that we want to use is the one that we put into our settings page. So if we go ahead and write that, I should just be able to go ahead and directly clone this. You can see here, we'll add yes, and it'll clone it right for us. And it went ahead and used our SSH authentication. As you can see here, we didn't need to do any sort of password authentication whatsoever. And SSH popped up and kindly warned us that we're registering a new fingerprint. So that's pretty much it. Now we can push pull. I'll just make a commit. So if we go to, uh, what did I call this repository? Epic. And I'll make a test file. We'll just write a whole bunch of stuff into it. And we'll do a git commit. And I'll just say, what a good day to be getting. And I'll push that. You can see here, we just pushed to a private repository. No problems, no password auth, no nothing. If I refresh the page here, you can see right here, we've got our little commit, which is really great. And that's pretty much it. Now you can use this exactly as you would GitHub and it's all running on your own computer, all self-hosted. Now I'll show you how I access this securely remotely. The way that I run this service securely without having to set up Nginx or an SSL certificate for Gidea specifically, you might have noticed if you've been paying attention that my actual legitimate Gidea instance that I run personally is set up here with localhost. Now it's not actually running on this particular computer right here, it's running on my server. But why does this computer think it's running on localhost? Well, I did a video a few months back where I coded a secure port forwarding tool and the link to that will be in the description. But essentially, if I pull up the code right here for this little utility that I wrote, essentially I'm taking advantage of a thing called SSH port forwarding. So SSH port forwarding is a mechanism where you can tell SSH to bridge a port for you over a secure tunnel. So essentially, even though Gidea is not running with an SSL certificate, SSH is providing an encrypted tunnel from my machine to that machine. And this little utility I've got down here just pulls that all to the, to the background. And I've got a config file that I can do up, which will basically, you know, show me what all the, what all the ports are and what I can connect to. So right here is an example of that. Uh, Gidea is running on my Emerald server and whatever the port I was using in there, I would put in here. And when con artist, that's what I called it because you get a connection artist, con artist. Uh, it's funny. I, I swear it's funny. But whenever he boots up, he will look at this config file and say, okay, I want you to forward TCP 22222 or whatever Git EA is running on, which I think is 9323. Yeah, it'll pull whatever that is to my local machine. And my local machine will think that it's basically local host and I can just use it from there. So that's how I access it securely without bothering about this. If you wanna see more information about that, check out the video in the description. That'll do it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you got value out of this. This is really cool. I love this stuff. This is fantastic. I'm, I, I just love Gidea. I can't get it out of my head. And I hope you guys really like it too. Thanks.